Hey, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show and welcome to day three of Couchmas. If you're new to Couchmas, it's a series of 31 videos that I try to do in 31 days in the month of December. So yesterday we saw my December TBR and today I thought it would be fun to kind of flip it and talk about my anti TBR, books that I will never read. If you see me reading these books, Call the police. It's an imposter. I have been kidnapped. I may have been abducted by aliens. It's not me. I'm unwell. I have my list here because there's no way in hell that I would have remembered all five books that I have here. But I'm I'm curious to see everyone else's opinions because these are 100% sure. I will never read these books for various reasons that I will get into as I go through the list. Before we get started, let me know in the comments if you have any books that you will never ever read and see if you can try to guess mine. Knowing that I am big into fantasy and romance, I like thrillers, I like mystery, I don't mind sci-fi and uh, that's all I'm gonna say. So see if you can guess mine and let me know what yours are. But let's start with number one here. Who's messaging me? Family group chat and husband. Okay, first one is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. <laughs> No, thank you. I have heard that <laughs> this book would ruin a person. I have heard that it has ruined people. I cheated a little bit and when I saw a lot of hype around it, I really, I've got FOMO. Okay, let's just, let's be honest with ourselves here. I have the worst FOMO. So I wanted to know what was going on in the book, but I didn't want to actually sit down and read the book because I had heard how horrible the life events of these characters are, right? So I went to go to Wikipedia and I looked up the synopsis and it was like a play-by-play -play of what happened. And even that was far too much for me. There is no way in fuck I will ever pick up that book and sit down and read it. Number one, I'm not emotionally stable enough for that. Number two, I don't have enough liquid in my body to be able to combat or not combat, to be able to like get the tears out and survive. Okay, I will end up in the hospital on an IV drip, guaranteed. There's no, there's no other outcome here. I, mm, I'm also the type that like, I will think about books that I've read months, even years down the line, and it will send me into a spiral again, if it was upsetting to me. So I don't want to ruin the rest of my life too. You feel? Ja feel, ja definitely feel. If you read it and you loved it, you're amazing. I love you so much. You're a stronger person than I am. If you're like me and you, mm -mm, I see you, I feel you, I am you, okay? There's no fucking way I will read this book. None. Cut to me reading this book in a few months for a fucking vlog because I'm an idiot. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it, okay? Mm -mm. I need a tea break. I've got a pumpkin chai latte here because unpredictable. Sorry, pumpkin marshmallow because it's superior and a little foam mustache. Let's move on to number two because like honestly just even thinking about the synopsis and all of the horrible horrible shit that happens to these characters is setting me off. Number two we're gonna whoosh, to a different different genre. I will never read this book because I watched the movie at a young age and it still haunts me to this day. I'm 31. I watched it when I was younger than 15 because that's when my brother moved out to go to university. So it's, I was 11 or 12. It's probably been 20 years since I've watched this movie and I will never read this fucking book because I still have nightmares, okay? The Exorcist. I don't even know who this is by. That, who, who is, I didn't even know that it was a book. Shh. What are you, who? The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. 1971 horror novel. Okay. Oh my God. That was a, a creepy picture that I just, I'll put it up here quick. Just, uh, no. I regret looking at that with my eyeballs. It is a horrible day to have eyes. Actually, let me take off my glasses. So maybe I won't see that. That's not how that works. That's not how that works, sunshine. It's already burned into your eyeballs and you're gonna see it in your dreams tonight. 
Anyways, um, <clears throat> look, <coughs> <coughs> scratchy throat. Pause, please. Let me in my little foam mustache here. Set the stage for you. For young Zoe, young pre-teen Zoe, who watched a lot of shit that she probably shouldn't have watched. Questionable decisions here. When did this movie come out? Uh, 1973. Okay. Yeah, 1973. So, I knew going into this movie that it was one of the most terrifying things my mother had ever seen in her entire life. For a very specific reason. This came out in 1973. She moved here to Canada from Greece in 1974, and she couldn't speak English. Or she could, it was very little. For some reason, she ended up seeing this movie. And the only thing she could understand was the devil itself speaking Greek. So you've got this small child here who can't understand fucking English, and all you can hear is the devil speaking the language that, that, that you know. And then you got the, the back down the stairs and the whatever. So she was like, ha ha ha, this would be a funny idea if we watch this. My brother and I, God love us, okay? We are little bitches. We are terrified easily of everything. The movie Signs, that scared the shit out of us, okay? The little aliens running by, vomitous children, vomitous. Like, it would, <sighs> and then I watched it in school, but that's a story for a different day. So we watched The Exorcist at high noon in our living room with these big windows every light on in the house, curtains thrown wide. I still could not sleep for at least three to five business days. I was, like I was prepared to be terrified and I want like full disclosure here, full honesty, I watch most of it like this, like not, okay. I tried not to, I covered my ears, I like, and then the Greek part started, okay. And it's, I've always been very close with my yaya, and my yaya speaks Greek to us. So I heard words that my sweet, sweet yaya says to me via the devil <laughs> at like 11, 12 years old. Okay, I was not prepared. I was not okay. So you will never catch me reading this fucking book. Mm -mm. And there are still times years later, 20 years later, where when I'm getting myself into a little tizzy and I'm starting to think about all the things that scare me because why the fuck wouldn't I? Like, mental stability? Who is she? She is not in the room with us. I do not know her. I start thinking about all the horror movies I've seen, the scary books I've read, and I'm like, what if a demon comes in and right now? And usually the demon takes the form of my cat, Draco, because he's a cat. But then I start thinking about the girl going down the stairs and like the the bed shaking like looking back like the the bed shaking objectively should be hilarious but i still cannot find the hilarity in it okay it was <laughs> too much for me too much for me okay and again i am not emotionally stable enough to put myself through reading that book which is a perfect segue into the next book in the same genre. What do I have here? Is it is it the next? Yeah. It by Stephen King. Number one, clowns terrify me. Number two, horror. We already established that I am not well enough to read horror and be okay. I, I just, I'm, I'm not. It's, it's a simple fact of the matter. Also though, and we'll see, we'll see this later on in this month because I did a vlog for last year's Couch Miss that never actually saw the light of day. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna revisit that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that up this, this month. <clears throat> actually a week from today, if all goes well, fingies crossed, you will see this a week from today. Uh, my first time reading Stephen King. Why alert alert, it wasn't for me. I'm... Um, I had some some things, some thoughts, and not for me. And I've heard some things about the book It that really solidify the not for me things. Unfortunately, I think me and Stevie King here, I I don't think we're gonna be friends. Um, but I absolutely will not read it because of the horror and the um the clown <clears throat> aspect. Yeah. Which is hilarious because a friend and I were 
gangster clowns for Halloween once. Like, did I give myself nightmares with that? I absolutely did. We looked hella fucking cute though, but I still, I still give myself nightmares. If I can find a picture, I'll put it right here. Yeah. No, like the clown craze of 2016, whatever it was. <laughs> I was not well. I did not want to leave my house at all. I was terrified that I was going to come across a clown and I was going to have to karate chop somebody, possibly myself, to, you know, knock myself out so I wouldn't have to experience the clown coming for me. So, logical? No. But it's probably what I would have done. Okay, I would have pissed myself and passed out. It's fine. Will I read something else by Stephen King? <sighs> Ugh. Likely because I am a glutton for punishment and I like to try doing the same thing over and over and over again to see if I will have a different outcome, which I'm pretty sure is the definition of madness. Also being a stubborn fucking bitch. <laughs> and nosy. I am a nosy bitch too. I just need to know how things end. I need to learn how things go. And like the Dark Tower series, I... is that is that what it's called? Um very intrigued but i've heard that it's like it ties into a lot of other things and like same settings and that could include some of the horror books and i don't know if i'm gonna go there we're gonna move on to the next one for a little palette cleanser here <clears throat> this could ruffle some feathers and you know what ruffle away we're, we're being honest here we're being we're being honest here with each other anything by colleen hoover I just have no desire to. Is it is it Verity where the thing happens with the mom and the dad and the baby? Is that the one? I've always had trouble. That sounded like one of my children, but it's the wind outside and now I'm terrified. Okay, talking about the horror books and then that shit and that's it for me. Yeah, I've always struggled with reading anything about um, harm coming to kids or kids dying. And that got so much worse after I got pregnant for the first time. And now, three kids in. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. It just doesn't work for me. It's it's a no for me. Just the, the premise of most of the books, just don't, they don't seem like they're for me. Again, could I eat my words and, and do a vlog months down the line? Probably tomorrow? Who knows? Likely. But at this moment in time, I just have no desire to. Spoiler alert here. I'm gonna just ding 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 the spoilers. Because I we need, to, we need to talk this out. I see a lot of people talking about how it's the the mom and the dad are joking about the baby's testicles like a newborn baby and they're like oh my god why would you talk about your kids nuts like that <clears throat> i have three sons okay and this might not be common knowledge to most people but when babies are born their testicles are swollen and it looks odd it doesn't look right. The first time I experienced it and saw it myself, I thought something was wrong. And it was just, it was jarring to see. And also newborn parents, your sense of humor is fucked. You are delirious. If you have just given birth, your hormones are all out of whack. You, you've been through some trauma. Even the best births, trauma. Your sense of humor takes a hit, okay? So like that part, I was always like, okay, whatever just you know maybe not parents maybe parents that have a more um refined sense of humor than mine but like that part never bothered me but the the joking and then them is it driving off a bridge and dying immediately after no no if i ever read that book i might just like glue the pages together so i don't have to read that section Anyway, spoilers done. Let's move on. Last one. This one is also one that I've seen the movie. I should not have seen this movie. I remember seeing it in theaters when it came out, I think on Boxing Day, because my family's always had kind of a tradition where we go and see a movie together on Boxing Day, like the extended cousins and everything. Let's see when this came out. 2009. I was 13. 13? 13. 13. 16. 16. Oh my god. Hold up. I can't do math. That was that was bad. That one was bad. That was worse than usual. Oh my god. Holy fucking shit. I was 16. Okay, because 1993. 
and then 2003 is 10, and then the 3 to the 9 is 6, right? Right. Anyways, I was 16, and I went to go see this in theaters. What day did it come out? Was it Christmas? I just need to know for my own well-being now. Okay, yeah, it was released November 25th in the States, so we would have seen it on, on Boxing Day. Oh, boy. Did I even say what it is yet? Oh my god, no. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is a post-apocalyptic film, I believe. Novel as well. Post-apocalyptic survival film. <sighs> I was misled. Also because the main actor is Vigo, also known as Aragorn, also known as the fictional love of my life. You cannot expect me to see Vigo's face and pass it up. I knew going into it that it was like post-apocalyptic. I did not understand. I had no semblance. I had no... Uh, oh, oh my god, I don't even have words for it. I didn't know how bleak this fucking movie was gonna be, okay? I walked out of that movie more depressed than I had ever been in my short life. I was emotionally wrecked. I felt like life had been drained from me and I could never be happy. I... I feel like there was cannibalism involved, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me see this Sanofi poo here. A man and his young son wander through this post-apocalyptic world trying to keep the dream of civilization alive. They journey towards the sea, surviving as the best they can on what they can scavenge, and try to avoid roving gangs of savage humans who will turn them into slaves or worse. And it was... rough, to say the least. No, go forward, not back, go forward. Thank you. Oh, okay, yeah, now I, 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 that part would, I'm gonna be very vague here, but this part with a mother would not, I would not be okay watching that. I would spiral out of control. Just reading the, uh, the Sanapi Poo quickly. Bleak is the word I would, I would go for and not the, the bleak that I am, the black and Greek. Post-apocalyptic stuff, as post-apocalyptic stuff Generally, not for me. This one in particular? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The movie was awful for me. The book? I can't even imagine how much worse it would be. No, thank you. So for that reason, no. Anyways, that's it. Five books that I will, or, or a collection, rather, um, one of them, that I will never read for reasons. Uh, let me know down below what you think of the books that I won't be reading, if you guessed any right. Um, if you agree, if you... Words. If you also will not read any of these ones that I have said. If you think I should, try to convince me. Give it your best shot. Because if I am presented with a good argument, more often than not, I will at least see the merit of it and possibly it might sway my my opinion. Or if that's just too much or you're gonna have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably, pur preferably purple ones or pink because my star, my favorite two colors actually. As always to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them. And if I ever pick up any of these, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I almost said Facebook, but that's false. Storygraph and threads. Good reads, did I say? I don't even know, all, all of those ones. All at Zoe's All Booked, which I will leave linked down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video so everyone else can join in on the madness, the chaos, the shit show. With that, we have come to the very end of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds, and I will see you in the next one for Couchmas Day 4, which is going to be... Burp, 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 burp my November wrap up. And <clears throat> as it is November that I'm filming this, I don't even know what's going to be on that. Aragon. That's the first and only book that I have finished this month so far. Okay, love you. Bye.